I'd consider honey to be a powerful health promoting food, but then I'd consider royal jelly as like honey on steroids. What's up guys, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health. And in today's video, what I'll do is take a look at some of the unique benefits associated with royal jelly on human health. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, please do like the video and hit subscribe down below to stay up to date with the latest and greatest health research. So what is royal jelly? Royal jelly is a yellowish white creamy acidic secretion from the mandibular and hypopharyngeal glands of young worker bees. What's interesting about royal jelly is that it is considered by traditional Chinese medicine as a potent longevity aid and a longevity promoting food because of its diverse broad mechanisms of action and also its highly nutritious profile that makes it a very versatile health food. So here we can see some of the biological effects and activity of royal jelly. Initial research was conducted to look at its antioxidant effects, its anti-tumor properties, anti-aging properties, neurotropic properties and also anti-inflammatory effects. I'll dive deeper into some of the unique effects shortly. So you will be seeing royal jelly linked in the video description down below if you do want to purchase a high quality royal jelly extract. So the very first point I want to explore with you is the lifespan extension properties associated with royal jelly. Now we can see the various pathways in which royal jelly appears to affect. We can see here that the longevity promoting effects of royal jelly appear to be mediated through increasing protein translation, increasing ribosomal biogenesis, increasing proteostasis, accelerating DNA repair, decreasing heat shock stress, increasing mitochondrial function, lowering oxidative stress, lowering inflammation, increasing pathogen resistance, decreasing lipofuscin levels, which if anyone's followed any of Dr. Ray Peets, he talks about the dangers associated with uh, lipofuscin, which a lot of these polyunsaturated fatty acids can actually increase, such as vegetable oils, sunflower oil, safflower oil, canola oil. So maybe royal jelly can actually protect against these damaging effects. So this is really great research, and I, I really like the fact that we're looking at a power food. That's how I call it because it enhances many aspects of cognitive function and athletic performance, but at the same time, it's actually extending lifespan, which is an, a huge bonus as well. So taking a look at the royal jelly constituents, typically it contains about 60 to 70% water, 12 to 15% proteins, 10 to 16% sugar, three to 6% fats, and two to 3% vitamin salts and amino acids. Now in terms of the vitamins, it is particularly rich in vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, and also vitamin B3, which is niacin. Now this is really important to note because that vitamin B5 is crucial to improve corticosterone or cortisol outputs. It's actually very, a potent B vitamin that actually supports the adrenal glands. And it's possibly one of the reasons why a lot of people that start royal jelly notice, you know, more energy and better mood and motivation because they're getting that cortisol support throughout the day. So the very first point that I want to explore is the potential increases in nerve growth factor production or NGF. Many people look at lion's mane as the top tier mushroom to increase nerve growth factor. I do believe it does this to a powerful um, extent. However, there are many drawbacks associated with lion's mane that I'm not a fan of. In particular, the kappa agonism and the DHT suppression, not a fan of uh, lion's mane in general. So we can see this study here was titled AMP N1 Oxide, a unique compound of royal jelly induces neuron outgrowth from PC12 cells via signaling by protein kinase A independent of, of that by mitogen activated protein kinase. To put short, the authors hypothesize that royal jelly appears to strengthen nerve growth factor production. By doing so, it can increase neurite outgrowth and basically help to strengthen different connections within the brain. And this is very noticeable when you use royal jelly. In particular, when I use royal jelly, this is usually through rapid rates of learning and uh, memory retention. Royal jelly definitely helps with that building connections, reading content, and you know, connecting ideas from my experience. The next awesome point to illustrate is the increases in testosterone. Now, this study was titled, 
effect of royal jelly ingestion for six months on healthy volunteers. Now, what the authors noted was that six months ingestion of royal jelly in humans improved erythropoiesis, which is the creation of new red blood cells, i.e. better athletic performance. The best way to think about erythropoiesis or EPO or erythropoietin is to think of cyclists that have been, you know, doping. They use EPO to increase their oxygen carrying capacity of their blood cells. And so we can see here that royal jelly does this, obviously not to the same degree, but to a milder extent, increasing erythropoiesis. Then the authors also noted that it improves glucose tolerance and also mental health. Now, they also noted that it was the acceleration of conversion from DHEAS to testosterone by a royal jelly that may have been observed among these favorable effects. So they're basically noting that royal jelly appears to increase testosterone by accelerating the conversion of DHEA S into testosterone. By the way, if you are interested in boosting your testosterone, many of you know that I got my testosterone up to 988 nanograms per deciliter naturally. Uh, check the links in the video description for my testosterone optimization course. It goes through everything I did to max out my testosterone. The next point I want to highlight is the potential raising dopamine levels. Now, although this study was not, <laughs> it wasn't in humans, we can see the study was titled consumption of tyrosine in royal jelly increases brain levels of dopamine and tyramine and promotes transition from normal to reproductive workers in queenless honeybee colonies. To sort of match this, we see a lot of people that use royal jelly describe feeling highly energetic and highly motivated after consumption. Another point to note is with the nerve growth factor production. From my experience, royal jelly may definitely improves my visual acuity and also increases color saturation just in general. Like I feel like things are more vibrant and more vivid, very noticeable when I use it. So we can also see we're matching here the ability for it to potentially raise dopamine levels as well. Does royal jelly have the ability to reshape the microbiome? This study does appear to support this claim. We can see the study was titled Royal Jelly Enhanced the Antioxidant Activities and Modulated the Gut Microbiota in Healthy Mice. What they noted was that royal jelly increased the amount of interleukin 10, which is a good anti-inflammatory pathway. And then also we can see that the middle dose of royal jelly basically decreased the relative abundance of proteobacteria at the phylum level, but increased the relative abundance of this lacnospirochy NK4A136 group and bacteriodes. If you look up this lacno spirochy group, which I'll probably cover another video on it because that appears to be a highly protective species or you know bacterial species that has some favorable effects on human health, just like Akkermansia, which metformin also boosts as well. So I'll come back, I'll actually come back to that because that deserves a video by itself. But I found that really cool that royal jelly could do this. Even though it was a, a mouse study, it does you know give promise that it may translate to humans. So just covering some of the other benefits associated with royal jelly. Number one, it has liver protective effects. It appears to stimulate growth, particularly amongst these liver cells. And also what's interesting is that from a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, they also prescribed it to help with liver damage to optimize liver function and detoxification. And it also seemed to support liver glycogen levels and decrease the accumulation of waste products such as lactate and ammonia which are both known to cause fatigue. It increases oxygen use and oxidative phosphorylation in the liver and also improving oxygenation uh, in the brain as well. Royal jelly also appears to increase muscular power, vital capacity, respiratory function and energy levels. It improves appetite and strength and increases body weight in cases of malnutrition, underweight, depression, and anorexia. Some evidence documents feelings of mental well-being in older people who also use royal jelly. And for me, I think this may be the dopamine boosting properties of royal jelly. Royal jelly also increases feelings of well-being in patients with tuberculosis. It appears to have hypotensive effects, so reducing blood pressure. Royal jelly may also lower cholesterol and general blood lipids. And other research actually suggests it can cause feelings of euphoria 
well-being, increased strength and appetite in patients with heart conditions. So this is pretty interesting research we're seeing on royal jelly. Royal jelly is also able to support optimal blood sugar levels by assisting in the oxidation of glucose in the body. And also it has been shown that there are potential insulin-like peptides that are found within royal jelly. The high levels of magnesium found within royal jelly may reduce oxygen consumption and blood lactate and also increase feelings of energy in patients with chronic fatigue syndrome as well. When looking at the dosages of royal jelly, I personally like to use royal jelly sublingually. You will see a link in the video description to purchase royal jelly if you want to know which one I've used and recommend. Now, what's interesting to note is that royal jelly also degrades quite quickly. So it is best to store it in a refrigerator, obviously in your, in your fridge or in a cool place and best to use sublingually. In terms of its mechanism of action, sublingually, it just appears to have a faster onset and also better mental effects when administered under the tongue. So in terms of a daily dosage, you're looking at about one tablet three times a day. And in terms of the recommended length of treatment, we're looking at about 10 to 15 days as a course. That's pretty much all the benefits associated with royal jelly. The next time you visit a health food store, hopefully you have a better understanding on what product can do and offer. If you enjoyed this video, please do like the video. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.